In this video, I'm going to be showing you that you can set up rate limiting within your application. I'm going to be demonstrating it within this answer engine project. And I thought it'd be interesting because I saw a couple of weeks ago, ChatGPT no longer requires an account for you to use it. And this is a little bit of a theme that I've started to see where you can just go to a link and start interacting with a project, which I think is overall great now. But the reason why it is important is say if you want to share the project with a wide number of people, then you want to set up some sort of conditions and boundaries. If say, if you're just trying to protect some of those more expensive invocations that are within your application, this is an example, say you want to limit people to 10 requests every hour or something like that. With this, I'm going to be using Upstash, Redis, and their rate limiting package. Upstash isn't sponsoring this video. I just really wanted to show this package because it's incredibly powerful and super simple to set up. And I think a lot of people will benefit from incorporating something like this. To make an account on Redis, just go to upstash.com. There's a number of different products here that you can check out if you're interested. Once you're set up, just go ahead and make a Redis database. Then once you're within here, you'll see that you get 10,000 requests per day for your Redis database. So incredibly generous free tier. And then within here, once your database is set up, you can just grab these environment variables. Once we have that, I'm going to pull down the repo here. And then once we have it, we're just going to go within the repo. And then I'm just going to open up the VS Code terminal here within this new workspace. Once we have it set up, I'm just going to install all the packages here. Now, the first thing that we're going to do within the project is we're going to go within our application folder and within the configuration file here, we're going to add a new key. We're going to call this rate limiting. We're going to set this to true. This is going to be optional. You don't need to use this within the application. But if you want to use the Upstash implementation, like I'm about to show you, toggle this on to true and incorporate the other pieces. Once we have that set up, we're just going to go within our action.tsx. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to include a number of new packages. We're going to first just put in a comment. We're going to say that this is optional. I'm going to push this within the repo. You can just go ahead and pull this down if you'd like. We're going to get a couple packages. So just make sure to install these packages. So you can just npm install. And then we're just going to be incorporating the headers. And that's going to be how we actually get the IP from the user. This is the key within our key value pair on how to detect how many queries a user has left. Go ahead and get the environment variables. So just make sure you've pasted in those environment variables within your .env within the application here. And then once you have all of that set up, you can just set your rate limit here. So say if you want to have 10 requests every 10 hours, or if you want five requests every hour, you can set it up like this. So you can set up for minutes. Say if you want five requests every 10 minutes, it's really flexible and easy to set up. Now within our action here, we're going to say, okay, if that configuration object is set to use rate limiting, First, we're going to declare the identifier. This is going to be where you could put in something like a key if a user is logged in, say if you do have authentication set up, or if you just want to use their IP, you could set up something like this. Once we have that, we're going to wait for the response. And the nice thing with the setup here is you're going to be able to access a number of different values. So you don't just need to access whether it's successful or not. You can also access how many attempts are left. So say if you want to render within the UI, like you have four requests left, or what have you, or if you want to render when the request will reset. Say if you want to have a message that says something like, you've exceeded your rate limit for today, try again at this time. And you could have it tomorrow or in a couple hours or whatever it is. With GPT-4, I know for a little while there, they had something set up where if you reached a certain number of messages, a modal would pop up and it would say, okay, basically try again in two hours or whatever the time frame was, it would tell you the time to try again for it. You can do something very similar with this setup as well. The rate limit has been reached. We're going to stream that response back to our front end. Now within our front end, all that we're going to do is if we go just like we did in the previous videos, if you saw them, is now we're going to add this new status. And the status we're going to declare as a string. And then once we have that set up within here, we say if our type message of status equals rate limit reached, we're going to go ahead and declare that within the state of our application. Once we have all that set up, we can just head on over to where we render all of our different messages here. And similarly, we can just say if message status equals rate limit reached, we can go ahead and render something here. Instead of this case of rendering a div here, I'm just going to go ahead and say rate limit, and then we're going to make a new component here. At the top here, we'll just go ahead and declare, we'll say optional, use upstash rate limiting. And then here we're going to import our own component. We just copy one that we already have here. And I'm going to call this rate limit, just like that. 
from there, we're just going to go with a folder where we have all of our different components here. And then we're going to make a new file called Raylan. So here, if I just go within VS Code and I click File, say RateLimit.tsx. So all that this has here is we're just going to say that the rate limit is reached. We're going to show that Upstash logo. We're going to say you've reached the rate limit for the current period. But like I mentioned, if you want to pass in more details, you could pass in, say, the time that it will reset within here if you like. You could change this out and pass in props here. If you Once we have that set up, you can go ahead and test it here. If you make a few different requests, you'll see that it will render. And then at a certain point, once it reaches that limit, it won't be incurring those additional costs for those API calls or that LLM response and all of that. I encourage you to check out Upstash Redis. As you saw, this is a super easy way on how you can incorporate this with any. You can use this on API endpoints. You can use this on Next.js applications. You can use this in really a number of different ways. I'm going to definitely be using it in more projects. If you want to be sharing an example widely out there and you don't necessarily want to have users sign up because a lot of users will just bounce off your page if they have to sign up for something and you just want to say, look at this cool thing that I built, try it out and limit it with a certain amount of queries, you can go ahead and set up something like this. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.